Welcome to Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S., Delivering Healthcare Part 1. This is Lecture A. The component, Introduction to Healthcare and Public Health in the U.S., is a survey of how healthcare and public health are organized and how services are delivered in the U.S. It covers public policy, relevant organizations and their interrelationships, professional roles, legal and regulatory issues, and payment systems. It also addresses health reform initiatives in the U.S. The learning objectives for delivering healthcare Part 1 are to describe the organization of healthcare at the federal, state, and local levels, describe the organization of the VA system and military health system, describe the structure and function of hospital clinical and administrative units, and describe different types of long-term care facilities with an emphasis on their function. This first lecture describes the organization of health care at the federal, state, and local levels, including the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or HHS, state governments, and local health care organizations. The HHS is the federal agency that oversees health care for all Americans. It focuses on helping citizens who are needy or underserved. Services are generally provided at the state, local, and Native American tribal levels. The HHS is run by the Office of the Secretary and includes 11 operating divisions. As illustrated in this flowchart, the structure of the HHS is complex. At the top, outlined in purple, is the Office of the Secretary, which oversees all operations. This lecture focuses on the inner boxes, outlined in blue, which represent the 11 HHS operating divisions. Three of these divisions are considered human services agencies, the Administration for Children and Families, the Administration on Aging, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. The other eight divisions are part of the U.S. Public Health Service. The Office of the Inspector General will also be discussed. Overall, the HHS runs more than 300 health care programs. The Administration for Children and Families, or ACF, operates federal programs that encourage economic independence, social well-being, and quality of life. Although this agency targets children and families, it also addresses individuals and entire communities. Vulnerable populations are a special focus, such as people with disabilities, foreign-born individuals, Native Americans, and victims of human trafficking. One current initiative, Let's Move Child Care, is an effort to promote child health by encouraging physical activity and healthier nutrition practices in early care and education settings. Another initiative seeks to build the supply and stability of high-quality family child care providers. Head Start, a program of the ACF, promotes school readiness among young children by working to improve health, nutrition, educational attainment, and social development. The Early Head Start program targets pregnant women as well as infants and toddlers. Next is the Administration on Aging, or AOA. According to government census projections, people aged 65 and older will represent 21.7% of the population by the year 2040. Individuals who are currently age 65 can expect to live, on average, about another 18 years. Many older people live alone and have a low income, creating an increased need for national programs that target this group. The AOA provides funding for non-medical, home-based, and community-based services for the elderly with the goal of prolonging the health and independence of senior citizens. Examples of these services are home delivery of meals, nutrition information, transportation services, adult daycare, and legal assistance. Decision-making about any issue is difficult when people do not have the information they need. In terms of health care, a good resource for information is the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, or ARC. 
ARC's mission is to produce evidence to make healthcare safer, higher quality, more accessible, equitable, and affordable, and to work within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and with other partners to make sure that the evidence is understood and used. The efforts of ARC target all stakeholders in the healthcare system, including patients, individual healthcare providers, hospitals, insurers, policymakers at all government levels, and medical schools. ARC helps organizations adopt new information technology, such as computerized medical records. It researches the effectiveness of treatments, including drugs, devices, diagnostic tests, and surgery, so patients and physicians can make informed decisions. The agency's other research interests are quality improvement and patient safety, illness prevention and care management, and issues of healthcare value, such as the affordability of healthcare. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, or ATSDR, works to prevent illness and disease due to toxic or hazardous substances. Among the most common toxic substances are arsenic, asbestos, lead, and mercury. Toxic substances may be found in the environment, in specific areas such as waste sites, or due to sudden disasters. People may be at risk from merely breathing, or from contact with water, food, soil, or through an open sore, like a cut. The ATSDR identifies potential exposures, quantifies the risk, and makes recommendations for protecting communities. It ensures emergency preparedness for natural or man-made disasters, and it educates healthcare providers on topics such as toxicology, environmental medicine, and acute chemical exposures. It also addresses public health advisories about hazardous materials or physical hazards such as unsafe buildings or abandoned mine shafts. To give an example, the ATSDR partnered with other government agencies after the terrorist attacks in New York City on September 11, 2001. It provided information about toxin levels and answered questions from residents, first responders, and the media. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, is responsible for public health. The CDC's mission is to protect America from health, safety, and security threats, both foreign and in the U.S. Major activities include health promotion, disease prevention, reduction of injury and disability, and public preparedness for emerging health threats. The CDC accomplishes these goals through numerous centers, institutes, and offices. Just a few examples are the Center for Global Health, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, the Office of Infectious Disease, and the National Center on Birth Defects and Developmental Disabilities. The CDC works with its partners, both national and international, to monitor current health and to investigate emerging threats to health, for example, swine flu. It also enacts prevention strategies and public health policies and advocates for healthy behaviors. The CDC monitors new threats to the U.S. public, such as infectious diseases that originate in other countries, like the Zika virus. Finally, the CDC offers a wealth of publications on healthcare topics, some written for healthcare providers and some written for the public. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, provides healthcare insurance for one in every four Americans. In fact, Medicare is the largest health insurer in the U.S., processing more than one billion claims every year. Medicare is for people aged 65 and older, along with younger people who have certain disabilities. Medicare insurance is divided into four parts. Part A, which is hospital insurance. Part B, which is medical insurance. Part C, or Medicare Advantage, which allows the use of private companies approved by Medicare or provider organizations. And Part D, which is prescription drug coverage. The insured person may pay monthly premiums depending on the plan selected. Medicaid, 
is a health insurance program targeted at low-income individuals and families who meet specific requirements. The eligibility rules and the services provided vary by state. Medicaid reimburses the medical provider directly, although some states require the patient to contribute a small copayment. Another division of CMS is the Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP. It serves uninsured children and pregnant women who do not qualify for Medicaid but cannot afford private health care insurance. It is well known that the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, protects the public by ensuring the safety and effectiveness of foods and drugs. The FDA also regulates medical devices, animal drugs, cosmetics, products that emit radiation, and other toxic substances. The FDA evaluates and approves new drugs and regulates the manufacture and marketing of tobacco products. The FDA is organized into eight centers with oversight by a commissioner. The Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, works to improve access to health care for individuals who are disadvantaged because of low income, lack of insurance, medical problems, or social isolation. With its six bureaus and 13 offices, HRSA provides leadership and funding for healthcare providers who treat uninsured patients, those with HIV or AIDS, pregnant women, special needs children, rural residents, and others. In addition to improving access to healthcare, HRSA monitors national organ, blood, and bone marrow donations, supports programs to combat bioterrorism, compensates patients who sustain severe vaccination reactions, and maintains databases to prevent medical malpractice and fraud. As seen in the previous slides, many HHS agencies target needy, underserved, or rural populations. The Indian Health Service, or IHS, is the federal agency that serves American Indians and Alaska Natives. Its mission is to improve the physical, psychological, and spiritual health of these groups by ensuring access to public health services. Health care for these groups must be delivered in a culturally sensitive manner that recognizes the sovereign rights of tribes. In fact, the U.S. has 567 federally recognized tribes in 35 states, totaling about 2 million individuals who mainly reside on reservations or in rural areas. Unfortunately, Native populations have poorer health than other Americans. Their life expectancy is a full five years shorter. For American Indians and Alaska Natives born today, their life expectancy is 4.4 years less than the U.S. all-races population. Sometimes these problems are due to poor education, poverty, discrimination, and cultural misunderstandings. The IHS seeks to address these problems, as well as health disparities. The medical research arm of the HHS is the National Institutes of Health, or NIH. This is the largest source of medical research funding in the world, promoting scientific discoveries in every U.S. state and abroad. Research is conducted at universities or research centers and at NIH laboratories on its own campus. The NIH is organized into 27 institutes and centers, many of which focus on diseases or body systems. Some well-known examples are the National Cancer Institute, the National Institute of Mental Health, and the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases. Other institutes and centers focus on specific patient groups, such as children and the elderly, for example, through the National Institute on Aging. Still other departments focus on specific research issues. Every society needs to be policed. The Office of the Inspector General, or OIG, works to protect the integrity of HHS programs. It performs nationwide audits and investigations, and it reports any abuses, fraud, or waste to the Office of the Secretary and to Congress. They also recommend corrections. 
An important part of the OIG's work is its ongoing efforts to stop Medicare and Medicaid fraud. It even posts an online list of most wanted healthcare fugitives. The list includes the names and photos of individuals who received millions of dollars in false Medicaid and Medicare claims, then escaped prosecution. Both healthcare providers and the public are encouraged to help the OIG identify fraud and abuse. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, or SAMHSA, works to improve the health of people with mental illness and those who abuse alcohol, tobacco, or illegal drugs. The agency provides funding for special programs and disseminates information on behavioral health issues. The rationale is that prevention and treatment reduce health care costs and social costs for individuals, families, and communities. SAMHSA's projects are spelled out in six strategic initiatives. Prevent substance abuse and mental illness. Integrate health systems to ensure that behavioral health care services are accessible and connected to the broader health care system. Establish a trauma-informed approach in health, behavioral health, human services, and related systems. Provide mental and substance use disorder recovery support. Promote health information technology and electronic medical records. Promote cultural awareness in healthcare practitioners. With so much going on at the federal level, what is the role of individual states in providing health care? All states have a Department of Health, although organizational structures vary. State health departments manage disease prevention and treatment, health promotion, and public health services for special groups, such as racial and ethnic minorities, families, and senior citizens. State and local governments also partner with the HHS to provide these services through state or county agencies or private companies. Recognizing the disparities in the U.S. healthcare system, the National Academy for State Health Policy works with states to improve healthcare access and quality. The Academy encourages states to collaborate with the federal government and private companies and to share information with other states. Currently, the agency is working with states as they implement payment reform initiatives related to the Affordable Care Act, the most recent federal health care reform law. Some local governments run clinics and hospitals, but they generally do not provide health care to their residents directly. Instead, various types of private organizations fill this need. Independent health care providers may be single physicians or group practices in the community. Corporate health care refers to self-insured companies that provide health plans and benefits for employees, their families, and retirees. Community health centers operate in every U.S. state. They provide primary health care services to low-income residents and are supported by public financing. At all local levels, healthcare agencies can operate on either a for profit or non profit basis. All community health centers are non profit organizations, but so are about 60% of community hospitals, 30% of nursing homes, and 17% of home healthcare agencies. Given the complexity of the U.S. healthcare system, it is not surprising that many types of hospitals exist. Hospitals may be for profit or non profit, and they may or may not be supported by the government. They may provide general or specialty health care. They may be affiliated with large teaching and research institutions at universities, or they may be based in the community. For profit hospitals may be single centers, or they may be chains with locations in many states run by corporations. Critical access hospitals are rural acute care hospitals that are certified to receive reimbursement from Medicare. This concludes Lecture A of Delivering Healthcare Part 1. In summary, this lecture described the organization of healthcare at the federal, state, and local levels. The HHS provides oversight through its 11 operating divisions. States run their own departments of health 
and healthcare is accessed locally through private practices, clinics, and hospitals. The overall goal is to ensure the health of all Americans.